So today we're going to be talking about Masterpieces Minutes in PhotoRaw 2021. And really inside PhotoRaw 2021, there are so many different ways you can bring out all of the different tones and colors within your landscape. So I really just want to showcase easy and quick ways that you can turn your landscape images into really creative, awesome works of art. So let's start with this photograph here. The first thing we probably want to do with our image is bring out the basic tonalities within it. We have this raw photograph here and without modifying anything on it, we have just kind of a blank canvas to work with. Well, because raw processing is so easy in Photo Raw, we can bring out the basic tones in our shot in various different ways. Um, if you're a person that really just likes to use one click to kind of create the, the basic tones in your shot, you can use this AI Auto button to easily just bring out the basic tonalities within your shot and kind of set the foundational look. If you're like me and you like to tinker with things a bit, you can go in here to the camera profile and you can actually modify the camera profile if you're shooting in a raw image. So because this is a raw image file, I can actually choose this camera profile menu and just by hovering over any of these, you can see it does a whole lot to my photograph. Now, one of my favorites here is either this on one landscape, especially for landscape images, or this camera vivid. I really like that camera vivid to bring out all of those underlying colors within the shot. So I'll choose that. And that camera vivid is basically uh, emulating the, uh, the vivid look on my DSLR camera that I was shooting with. So it's really powerful little tool here, this camera profile menu to just make everything pop within your scene. So with two clicks, you know, we've used our AI auto and our camera vivid. We have from this image, we have this shot. So um, like I said earlier, there's so many different ways you could do that. If you wanted to do it manually, you could just reset all of this. And we could go in here and do this all manually with our tone and color here. Let's say we want to add in a little bit more vibrance and we also want to bring out some of those underlying uh, midtones within our shot. Well, let's just go down to our midtones. I'm going to pull those up a bit. That's going to bring out some of those middle grays within the scene. And then let's add in some contrast so the image doesn't look flat. Oops. Pull up on our shadow tones a little bit. That's going to bring out some of those darker tones within the image, just like that. And then let's just go down to our saturation and let's just increase the saturation a bit. So, you know, with a few sliders here, now we have this image. So there's so many different ways that you can go in and tinker with the tonalities of your shot. If, if you're a person that just likes to have the program do it for you, which is awesome, you can use that AI auto button and then maybe one of these camera profiles. Or if you wanna go in and fine tune every single slider, you can do that as well. So really up to you on kind of your preference to stylizing and modifying photos. Um, I typically, late as of lately, have just been using a camera profile and then choosing AI Auto and then just kind of messing with it from there. So I'll just probably pull up on my midtones a bit and there we go. So that's how easy it is to set the underlying tonalities within your image. Now let me show you how easy it is to stylize and selectively edit. So in this landscape, we obviously have a pretty bright sky, right? There's a pretty, pretty bright area to the left and up here above this mountain, it's a little bit too white and there's not much detail within that sky. Well, using PhotoRaw 2021's new color range gradients, we can selectively edit that area in an instant with our local adjustments. So let me just go into my local adjustments tab and I'll just hold down shift and hit K on my keyboard. That's going to grab me my adjustable gradient. I can just drop that down on my horizon line. I'll flip this around so that it's applied to the sky. And if I turn off this local adjustment, it's applying it to the entirety of that area. You can see that if I go to my mask view, it's covering the mountains in my background. And I don't want that. I only want it applied to the sky area. So let's view this photograph. And I'm just going to head up and choose color range now. Once I choose color range, now if I view my mask, it's selectively applying this adjustment to those areas of color that I'm choosing. So I'm just going to use my color dropper and I'll drop it on this area of white up here. And there we go. Now it's only applied to that area up there in white and nowhere else on my scene. So if I view this now, it's a little bit crunchy because it's, it's masking, but if I turn this off and on, it's doing an awesome job of bringing back those details within that blown out area. And one thing I typically do with the masks here is if it's like this and you have a little bit of, you know, that does a really good job of masking it. So if you have a really defined edge, it may look awkward when you're using a, 
a darkening uh, local adjustment or something where you're darkening or brightening. So if you have these edges in here that are a little bit jaggedy, just go over to your masking options in this adjustment. And since everything is maskable and blendable in Photo Raw, we can just feather this mask like that. So now if I zoom out, I don't have those jagged edges. And if I turn this off and on, it's a much more natural looking adjustment. So in this local adjustment, just by using that one uh, adjustment layer here, we've modified that entirety, the entirety of that sky area and we've brought back all of that detail in it. So now let's just add in a little bit of contrast there to make sure it pops. And then I'm gonna go down and I'm just going to warm it up a little bit. Just a hair, like that. So now if I turn this off and on, it's not only adding in detail to that sky, it's making it pop a little bit more and it's also adding in some, some color. So we have a much more interesting background now than we did before. So we've started with this image and now we're moving on to this photograph. And I think that may need a little bit less of that adjustment. Might need a little bit of a, of a white boost so it's not so flat. That's better, much better like that. So um, using that local adjustment layer, it's done a whole lot to our image and we can do the same thing to our foreground. Let's say if we wanna add in detail or color to these greens, we can do that with an effect. So let's just go into our effects. I'll add a filter. I'll use my color enhancer filter, which is an awesome filter for modifying colors within your shot. And if you're not familiar with Photo Raw or using Photo Raw 2021, or even the, the latest version of Photo Raw, if we add a filter in our effects tab, we can actually search for different filters that apply specific effects to our images. So if I wanna find a filter that modifies color, I can just type in color, and then I have all of these different filters that modify the color within my shot. And I chose Color Enhancer, which is kind of the standard color modifying filter because you have all of these different adjustment sliders that you can use to modify all of the colors in your shot. I'm just gonna go down and pop the saturation quite a bit and the vibrance, just like that. And I think that looks pretty good so far. We're gonna modify this so it's selectively applied, but if we're just focusing on the greens in our foreground, I think that looks pretty good. But I don't want that applied to the entire image. I only want it applied to these colors in my foreground. So I'm gonna hit M on my keyboard. I can drop this down. And then if I turn this off and on, again, it's still applied to the entire thing. So I only want it applied to these greens. So let's just go into our masking options. I'll choose color range. I'll drop it on this area of green here. Now if I view this, I can fine tune my color range like that, and now it's only applied to those areas in green where I'm picking that, that mask or that I'm applying that mask to. So let's view this now, and I'm gonna turn this up quite a bit so we can really see what's going on. But now if I turn this off and on, see how it's only applying those colors to those green areas, and we could always modify you know, the, the color range here, so if we want less, That might work a lot better. There we go. So now it's only applied to those areas of that green color. And you can always go in and fine tune, you know, any of those adjustments or where that adjustment is applied to just by modifying this coloring slider. And if you're um, familiar with masking, you can modify your level slider too to really kind of hone in whatever adjustment you're trying to apply to your shot. So if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, we already have a much more interesting photograph going on and we've only added on a color enhancer, a local adjustment, and we've modified our develop tab a little bit. So not a whole lot uh, that we've done to the shot and we have a much more interesting photograph. So let's just fine tune this a little bit. I'm just gonna add a filter and I'm gonna add a vignette filter like that. But I'm going to take this off of the sky. So I'm just gonna hit M on my keyboard I'm gonna drop that down and it's going to, I'm going to remove that from the top area of my sky so it's only applied to the bottom. And that'll just kind of force the viewer's attention into this central area of the shot and we'll avoid all these other areas on the foreground. So if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard now, I think that makes for a much more interesting sky and also a much more interesting uh, foreground element that leads our eyes kind of into the scene here. 
So one last thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna add a filter and I typically just add a curves filter, kind of polish things up. And I think I might darken up the shadow tones just a hair, right that, and then pull up on my highlights a hair to make things pop a bit, kind of polish up the scene. And perfect, I think that looks a lot better, more of kind of a punchy image now. So again, let's just view our original. We started with this photograph. And now we have this image in just a few kind of adjustments and uh, we've easily selectively applied our adjustments too by using those new color range gradients in photo raw 2021 and the next edit we have this little milky way edit and i just want to show you guys again some some ways you can selectively edit and apply inside photo raw because i know that's okay so let's go in here to the edit module Okay, so we have this raw image file here and I have nothing applied to it. This is just kind of the basic um, unedited raw file here. So if I zoom in, we have some detail in our, in our Milky Way here and we do have some detail in our foreground. So I think we could really push this raw file again to have um, a, you know, all of the tonalities that we kind of envisioned when we were shooting it. So first things first, we need to bring out the basic tones in the shot. And again, there's so many different ways you can do that. Um, one way I typically do it with these Milky Way images is I'll go to this camera profile and I'll choose on one neutral. I think neutral just kind of neutralizes the scene a bit. It brings out some of the, the mid-tones in the shot and you can see just by doing that, just by choosing that on one neutral, if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, it does a pretty good job of just boosting up the mid-tones and kind of alleviating some of those darker shadows on my shot. Now, what I can do is I can just pull out on the basic tones of my shot just using sliders. Um, I don't like to use AI Auto for Milky Way shots just because you're dealing with so many different tones at once. So I typically do this all with my tone and color and I don't do a whole lot of processing. I usually just go in here, I'll pull up on my mid-tones. That's gonna pull out the middle grays within the shot so I can see you know, those middle grays in my sky and that makes these stars pop out in the Milky Way. And then I want some shadow tones, right? So I'll just pull up on the shadow tone slider here and that's just gonna bring out, you know, those darker areas within the image. Now I'll add in some contrast because you don't want things looking flat in a Milky Way image. The more, I guess you can have too much contrast, but the more contrast you have, the more pop you have within the stars, if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna pull up on the contrast right there. And then if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, that doesn't look too bad. That looks fine like that. And then I'm just gonna go down and I'm gonna cool this image off a bit with just the temperature slider. So cool it down about 20 or so, just like that. Keeping it nice and natural. If it's a little bit too warm, it looks odd, I feel like, with Milky Way images. So if you are modifying Milky Way images, just make sure your, your temperature is how you like it because it can kind of come off too warm or too cool sometimes. So just make sure there's like a balance there. Um, yeah, that looks, I think that looks fine for our base uh, look. Let me just crop this real quick. And then <clears throat> rotate it. Like that. Cool, that uh, looks much better. Okay, so now with our shot, we have basically two areas that we need to modify. We have our foreground, or our foreground, sorry, and then we have our background, right? Well, in Photo Raw 2021, you can selectively apply pretty much anything that you want to a photograph. So I wanna selectively apply a curves filter strictly to my stars. I, o I don't want the, the curves filter applied to my foreground, I only want it applied to the stars. So I'm gonna go into effects, I'm gonna add a filter, I'll add the curves filter, and with this curves filter, Typically with Milky Way photos, uh, I create sort of a basic S curve with my curves filter here. So I'll pull down the shadows a little bit. That's gonna add in darker tones to the shot and it's gonna um, remove exposure, but it's also going to add in detail to those darker areas, right? But it darkens the things up too much. So I can pull up on my mid-tone point here now. Maybe I don't need that many shadows. Like that, I can pull up on my mid-tone point now and you can see just like that, it's really adding in a lot of light and a lot of punch to my sky. Now I can see that Milky Way a lot more. And I think we need to cool this photo down maybe even a tad bit more. There we go. So let's go into the effects tab now. And I have that curves filter applied. Doing a really good job of just boosting up those stars in my shot. 
but I don't like what it's doing to the foreground. It basically darkens everything up in my foreground and I only want it applied to those stars. So let's just go in here. I'm going to use my masking options and I'm going to use a luminosity mask again. So I'll just choose lumen and I can view this. And again, with the luminosity mask, it's automatically going to find the brighter areas within your shot and then apply that adjustment to those. So I can see the brighter areas are these star areas. So in white, white reveals, black conceals, it's applying that curves filter. So I'll just go over to my curves filter and I need to modify this level slider here so that I can only, only apply this adjustment to this area on the background. So we're going to modify our level slider. Same thing. We're just going to pull up on the shadows and that's going to remove the shadows from our mask. But I need more midtones, so I'll pull left on the midtones, and that's going to incorporate more midtones. Then I can incorporate more highlights. Can pull right on the shadows, and that's going to remove it from my mountain. Add in more midtones. We'll add in more highlights, and that looks pretty good just like that. What now? Typically, what I'll do is I'll just use my brush here. I'll switch it to paint in, and then I can use my perfect brush. Oops, make it a bit smaller. And I can just paint on all of the areas that this mask missed, just like that. And I can always fine tune those areas that I painted onto the mountain. But I think this looks pretty good for just applying it to the sky. So then I'll just zoom in real quick. Again, I'll grab my masking brush, switch that to paint out now. And then I can just remove those little areas away. Just like that. So now I can see that it's only applied to the sky area and it's not applied anywhere else on my shot. And this is a very helpful tool if I want to take this mask and apply it to other adjustments, I can invert this mask. So now that I have this mask created, I can view this. If I turn this off and on now, it's doing a wonderful job of only applying that adjustment to the background, but it makes the, the foreground elements look a bit weird. But we can use this mask we just created. I'll just copy this mask. I'll add a filter. We'll use dynamic contrast. I'll use surreal just so we can see what we're working with. And then I'll go to my masking options. I'll paste that mask and then I can just invert it. And now that's applied to my foreground now. So if I turn this dynamic contrast filter off and on, it's applying that detail right into the foreground and it's avoiding all of those areas in the top. And I can, of course, you know, pull back on the opacity as much as I want to really just make it look natural. But I think that looks pretty good as far as just, you know, a few adjustments and creating our Milky Way shot. Let's just hit the backslash key on our keyboard. We started with that, we started with this photograph and now we have this image. 